At the release of this video, with a 726 patch, the meta is heavily shifting in favor of heroes that can do more with less. This means that while heroes like Storm will want to first get a more expensive item and reach a comfortable level before being active around the map, other heroes can actively mow down towers or invade side lanes with either just a few levels or just a few cheap items. Thanks and have fun. Heroes with good mobility such as Void, Ember and Queen of Quop will have a great time and heroes with less mobility but great sustain will have a great time too. Case in point, Necrophos. This will be more of an overall guidelines on what makes the hero strong in the meta rather than a full-pledged guide, but I will do my best to touch up on the gameplay, items and overall goals. First and most important aspect of the Necro, he wins lanes. This is primary reason why he excels at the current meta. If the opposing mid laner doesn't have a hero equipped to deal with Necro, that hero now faces three options. Option 1. Stay in lane and spend resources on regeneration, leaving him deprived of stat items. Option 2. Only show in lane to deep push and farm mostly jungle, which would give him better farm but risk losing tower. Option 3. Call support rotations to mid, which would hold Necro in place for a while, but open up the side lanes, thus creating space. Let's quickly look over my laning versus Storm. He's got great base damage, overload and remnant, so he already excels at the nice and last hits. And he does a great job of right clicking creeps, successfully claiming my creeps and denying every third of his. However, all of this comes at a cost. For every second he spends in the lane, he's losing health thanks to my Q and Aura. And for every second I spend in the lane, I gain health, also thanks to my Q and Aura. So, while he's doing a really great job securing last hits, all of the gold he's earning from it goes right into delivering cells to himself non-stop, just to stay in the lane. By level 6, he's equally farmed as me in terms of XP, but ridiculously underfarmed in terms of gold, having twice as little net worth as myself. This is the cost of laning against Necro, and it applies to many heroes. Just by existing in the lane, you're hurting your opponent's economy to the point that they no longer feel comfortable staying in the lane and either have to invade side lanes with less farm than ideal, or play catch up in the jungle, letting your own team set up the tempo. This concludes the laning phase. If all went well, the mid tower should be down, and from here on now, Necro has two options. Continue pressuring tier 2, eventually forcing either a tower down or rotations, or alternatively, group up with the team and push sides. What Necro lacks in mobility and solo pickoff potential, he makes up for in sustain and teamfight potential. It is nearly impossible to solo kill mid game Necro alone, and it is equally hard to deter tower pushes with Necro in the middle of it. And this is what we'll be doing throughout the mid game. Dominating performance. Double kill. In the meanwhile, let's talk items. Your first task is to directly counter what the enemy most threatens you with. In this match, I got right click some Storm, Slark and LC covered with just my Ghost Shroud, and for other mild magic output from Storm, Ogre and Dazzle, just the Hood of Defiance should be enough. If I was facing a heavier magic team, Pipe would be in order, and if there were heavy bursters like SF, Klinks or Ursa, Blade Mail would be excellent there. There's also Yules and Rod of Arrows. All of the aforementioned items are cheap and you should have whatever you're lacking covered by the time you're entering mid-game.
Since I didn't need to counter anything specifically in this match, I pimped out my sustain instead. Greaves first, it greatly increases your tower pushing capabilities, and after that's covered, Radiance is my next luxury item. Additional sustain through mischance, and with already great survivability, the longer you stay in the middle of the fights, the more damage you dish out. Great synergy all around. Regarding neutral items, just take whatever you're lacking. I personally like extra magic resist from Nether Shoal and the spell damage buff Radiance and Q a bit and lets you ult a tiny bit earlier. By this point, the match is ours. Let's quickly cover the last two aspects. First one being spells and talents. The way I like to play it is skill Q and E in lane equally, prioritizing Q only if the opponent gets into its range a lot. Very rarely will I skill Gosha before level 10, as very few heroes actually want 1 vs 1 a necro. And if they send 3 or 4 people to gank you, chances are those shroud wouldn't be enough anyway. Regarding talents, the 10th strength should almost always be your choice, as you rely less and less on right clicks as the match goes on, and more and more on survival. Level 15, the shroud slow is low key overpowered. This is a 50% slow on a short cooldown, letting you outrun most chasers and chase down most runners. Wouldn't be surprised if it was reduced in the following patches. Level 20 is on match by match basis. If you're facing heavy healers such as late game Lancer, reducing their effectiveness is great. Otherwise, continue buffing your own survivability. For level 25, it is mostly preference, but I'd take Heartstopper Aura, as by that time I'd have Aghanims too, and 10 seconds CD Ghost Shroud with double aura just melts everyone around. Lastly, let's talk weaknesses and what to be aware of when picking and playing Necro. That boy is slower than a goddamn Crystal Maiden, so forget about ever roaming to get ult kills unless you get a good rune. You'll also have to rely on your team to initiate unless you buy a blink. As mentioned before, Necro has no solo kill potential on his own, doesn't take later towers on his own, so again, a good team and team coordination is required. Lastly, Necro's biggest counter is Nullifier. It is quite costly and most cores would prefer to gear up with other items first, so by the time they do get notifier, the match is over for them anyway. But if you are facing roadblocks, be aware of this item and plan your engagements accordingly. And this concludes today's topic. I will leave you with the rest of the match. Thank you for watching. Good luck. shall be shankers by the acres.
Stop it. 